have been going on since the late 1800s, with the very first film being a French film called The House of the Devil. Yes, it does have a French name, but knowing my accent, I refuse to say it because I will butcher the hell out of it. Ever since then, horror movies have been thriving in different countries and regions with their own flavor, to a point where even their subgenres have their own subgenres. A horror movie at this point could have something for everybody, be it psychological, gore, something for sci-fi, something a little romantic. So when you try to make a top 10 list for, for horror movies of all time, <laughs> it could be a little tough. Keep in mind though, this is my own personal list. If you have a different one, if you have a different idea of what should be what, feel free to mention that in the comments, but let's be civil. And also keep in mind that considering how wide the variety of horror movies are, I could probably change this list in five years. So if you're gonna complain about why isn't this movie in this one, it'll probably be in the next one, just, say, just wait. So counting down from, top, from our top 10 we starting with, 911, what are you reporting? I just saw something bad. Sorry, did you say, you say something bad? Yeah, something really bad happened. God, she's bleeding. Where is she bleeding from? The Babe, released in 2012, uh, which admittedly I just saw in 2020. What we have here is a mockumentary revolving around the town undergoing this mysterious outbreak that is slowly killing off its residents and dealing with like the multiple different levels of the town itself is reacting from negligence of the higher ups to just random everyday people trying to deal and survive the disease. <coughs> um, so, and the reason why I like this movie is because it feels very grounded. I won't say what's the cause of the disease. I won't spoil anything like that because I do feel like this is something you have to deal with. You, you, you should watch yourself. But what I loved about the movie was one is very relevant to how things are going right now. Some could argue. The fact that this mockumentary is taken from so many different points of view, you feel like you are watching real people deal with this outbreak and you see real people suffer from this outbreak. And when the people feel real, the events feel real, which in my opinion makes the horror feel real. Oh my God. We're in the middle of some kind of viral outbreak. It's eating their organs, intestines, liver. Like as if this could happen to me, like I could go on, like, so I could go basically go into this bay, come out with like scarring lesions. And yet God knows this thing, this movie had my skin crawling for hours after watching it. So yeah, do give this movie a shot. To be honest, from what I gather, it is a little underrated. Uh, it, like it is a little dated, being in 2012. But do watch it. It will creep you out if you like body horror. If you like creature features, this is the perfect watch for you. That you would not be disappointed. Sound then three sharp knocks. Ba -ba -ba -duk -duk -duk. That's when you'll know he's around. You'll see him if you look. Number nine, what we have is the Babadook, released in 2014. Now, the Babadook is not exactly the most conventional horror movie, um, especially if you watch the trailers. You may have been a little, you might have a different idea what this movie will be. This movie is essentially a horror movie drama it's a family drama about this woman who is who recently lost her husband and is forced to be a single mom for her son and on top of that she her her and her house are being haunted by this very 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 terrifying in the most simplest way boogeyman called the babadook um so this movie is a bit of a slow burn it definitely builds up to the scare scenes it does put a lot more of emphasis on the characters than the scares. And generally I can understand why people would have a problem, but I would I personally loved it mainly because the actors did a superb job. Number eight, 
Thirty Days of Night, based off the graphic novel of the same na- name written by Steve Niles. Plot revolves around a small town in Alaska that goes to its annual month-long period of darkness. That was a little dramatic, right? Basically, it goes through night 24-7 for a month. You could imagine a particular group of people that would love to consider that their vacation spot. <laughs> Vampires. So, so what what would happen if you get bait? So now imagine this: you're living in a town, you're doing your thing. Sun goes down for a month, for, for, for a month, and you have to deal with vampires that could treat like that could treat your town as their own personal killing ground, and you're just stuck there. That's the plot of the movie. The movie is fantastic. The, like one, they did something which is most vampire movies, which a lot not a lot of vampire movies have done since in my twenty-something years of life, which is really make vampires scary with their inhuman design, as well as their whole mannerisms. Yeah, it's a bloodbath. This movie is a straight-up bloodbath with, with intense violence and gore, but at the same time accompanying it with a very tense and like a movie filled with gore and vi- uh, intense gore and violence, but accompanying it with a very isolating and intense atmosphere, making you feel like which makes you put puts you in the shoes of the characters that you got that you cannot escape this town. You are stuck here, and you just have to survive the month. Number seven, Train to Busan. Now, horror movies are not just isolated to the West. You have every single country bring their own flavor to the horror genre. Specific, uh, and Korea is no exception. So, well, South Korea is no exception. So, the movie is basically a uh, it's pretty straightforward plot. It is a father taking his daughter to visit his mother to visit her mother in Busan, in South Korea, and. They take a train, and that train is filled with zombies. Pretty straightforward, and it is awesome. So, got like a few things you should know though before watching the movie. I, like, unlike most zombie movies, this movie does. Is not nowhere near as bloody and as gory as most zombie films are. However, that does not make this film any less tense. You have a claustrophobic space that's continuously moving, and you have a small group of survivors trying to make it and escape this train filled with like ravenous flesh-eating zombies. And one of the things that really makes this film work is the tension and also the fact that the characters are so well written and so well developed. You will care about each and every single one of them, and you will, and it will hurt if you see. Like it will hurt you to the point that it'll hurt you if something ever happens to them. Except for one guy. There's one guy who's uh, <laughs> kind of a definitely something to watch every Halloween. I've painted a movie to watch every Halloween. And probably one of the finest horror films from South Korea. Number six, Black Christmas, the original from 1979. So, Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas, is 
one of the pioneers, in my opinion, next, right next to Halloween, one of the pioneers of the slasher genre, and built up a lot of the horror movies you've kind of grew to see over the years. Now, with that being said, the plot is pretty straightforward. You have a sorority house that's on Christmas Eve, or around Christmas time, being stalked and killed by one, uh, with the members being stalked and killed one by one by a unknown protagonist. A high school girl's been murdered. Mr. Harrison's daughter is missing. And now at the house where she lives, the other girls are getting obscene phone calls. Billy. Now, Billy is this movie's particular villain. And while he isn't as iconic or visually memorable in any way compared to some of the others in the late 80s, what makes him terrifying is just how little you know about him and how little he shows about himself in the film. And he is disturbing. Like, even by today's standards, I find his moments, be it from his obscene phone calls to the weird history this film builds up to, just spine-chillingly terrifying. The fact that, uh, and the fact that this movie isn't very over the top, the fact that this movie is very grounded in my own, it is what makes this movie work. It, there isn't, it's not over the top bloody, it's not, oh, it's not like, it's not, it doesn't break the rules of biology with how they go with their kills. And on the plus side, the characters are entertaining. They aren't just people who you want to see die. After Black Christmas, they'll never be the same again. Black Christmas. Hello? Hello? Who is this? You tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I don't think so. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. Now, if you're going to be talking about horror movies to watch every Halloween, ooh, Scream is definitely up there. Uh, directed by the ma one of the masters of horror himself, Wes Craven, the genius behind Nightmare on Elm Street and the original Hell Have Eyes, using a very simple plot of a killer, using old films from the 80s and 70s as a reference point, and, ba and having, essentially, it's a guy who is killing people using horror movies, pre-existing horror movies that most of us have seen, or at least I'd like to think, have seen as a reference to what he does. And that's just awesome. Someone is playing a deadly game. It all began with a scream over 911. Do you like scary movies? Scream. Number four, 28 Days Later, released in 2002. You ever watch a movie, like a horror movie specifically, that makes you feel like you just did like a five mile run? Or like just an intense workout? Because this is what this movie feels like. Taking place in London, 28 days, as the title says, after a virus broke out, infected people, who just run and mess you up. Amongst them, you have survivors try, basically trying to make it out of England st with the head star being Cillian Murphy, who does an amazing job in this film. What makes this movie such a wild ride, because yeah, this movie is a ride to be sure. And taking the really quick and violent infected along with the really shaky editing, which granted, most films I would not be down for, but this one, ooh, they make that work. So you take those two elements and take one of the greatest sound horror soundtracks of all time, in a house, by, in a house, in a house beat by John Murphy. All that combined, it, it creates a, a, one of the most fast-paced, terrifying, and admittedly exhausting, in a good way, zombie films I have seen to date. It was good back then, and it is good now. And seriously, to be honest. Check out the sequel. I know a lot of people give it a hit. It's pretty good. Number 
Four years ago, in this quiet forest, in this cozy cabin, something happened. We prayed it would never happen again. All right, number three, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, released in 1987. Directed by Sam Raimi. Yes, yeah, Sam Raimi, the one who brought us Spider-Man in the early 2000s. That's Sam Raimi. And my personal favorite actor, I don't care what people say, with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, Bruce Campbell provide an excellent, like, deliver an absolutely awesome, fun, over-the-top gore fest of a movie. You basically have a bunch of teenagers, and one by one, you have each of the friends possessed by homicidal and vicious go uh, demons that just basically mess everything up. The most perfect actor that you could cast for this movie, Bruce Campbell playing Ash Williams, who single-handedly has to go up against his possessed friends. And it is a bloodbath. It is violent. It is as low budget as you can possibly get, but when you look at how much work comes out of it, Every frame, just you could see the work they put into this film, and it shows. This movie is a work of art. We found something. We found something. We found something. Now, number two John Carpenter's The Thing, released in 1982. Starring two of the greatest actors in the 80s, in my honest opinion. You got Kurt Russell and you got Keith David, the greatest voice actor of all time. If you do not know his name, do look up Spawn. And uh, if you are a 90s kid, Spawn and Gargoyles. This is what the game Amongst, uh, Among Us is based off of. You have a bunch of crew members who operating in, in this isolated base in Norway. And you have this alien that kills and eats them one by one and turns into them and it's up to them to figure out who's the alien and who's not before it consumes each and every single one of them. And this movie is suspenseful and the visual effects are still amazing even today. Like you look at that and very little of it is CGI based. In fact, none of it is. It's almost entirely practically, uh, practical effects. It's pure movie magic, this movie. Why am I in here? Are you on protection? The performances of the actors, and you take the mind-bending idea of trying to figure out, as an audience member, you trying to figure out who's an alien and who's not. Yet this is basically like watching an Among Us game played on expert level. It is that good. It is still up. To, it still holds up. Definitely watch it. But also, the remake is good. I like the remake. Now, before we go to number one, as I said, there is a wide variety of horror movies that I wanted to choose from, that I wanted to put in this list, and I would not feel right without mentioning at least some of them as honorary mentions. So with that, here are the following. The Void, Anaconda, my first R-rated movie, fun fact. Um, Dog Soldiers, uh, 2015's The Witch, uh, Cabin in the Woods. So with that, those are my honorary mentions. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. Well, let's get down to number one. And with that, we got Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, released in 1980. This is my favorite horror movie. This is the movie I watch every Halloween. And even when it's not Halloween, if I want to get people into watching horror, this is the movie I go with. So many memorable moments that still scare the hell out of me even now. Down to a particular hallway with these two twin kids who are creepy as all hell. To a particular bathroom scene that I will never ever get out of my mind. If you have not seen this yet, what? Why? 
I don't want to say anything more because I do not want to spoil it. This movie is amazing. The acting is amazing. The director is ama- The directing is amazing. It is creepy as hell. It is scary as hell. Watch it. And that is my top 10 list of horror movies. Uh, if you disagree with me, I'm sure you're going to rip me open in the, co- in the comment section and that's all good. But if you have your own uh, top 10, do mention in the comments.